The brain is a wonderful but really mysterious organ. Even though we've localized many functions, it's still hard to pinpoint where exactly many things take place. Memory is a perfect example of that. But while we may not be able to find the specific locations of memories, we do know for sure which structures play important roles in memory formation. In another lesson, I say that the memories that we form can sort of be categorized into two groups. Implicit memory that has to do with procedures, how to perform skills or tasks, and explicit memory, which has to do with like facts, contents, or memories of experiences and events. What I'm about to show you is the culmination of decades and decades of countless people's research and studies into where we think memory is located in the brain. There's still heaps more to find out, but it really is amazing what we currently know. Here we go. So starting in the limbic system, that center part of the brain, the basal ganglia is where it's thought long-term procedural memory and movement memory is stored. The hippocampus, crucial for forming explicit memory. So that's declarative memory, both consolidating and retrieving facts, names, events, things like that. The amygdala is suggested to be vital in forming long-term implicit memories, including emotional memories, which shouldn't be surprising if you know what the amygdala does. It also seems to store some procedural memories, such as skill learning and classical conditioning. We'll be focusing on the hippocampus and amygdala more in the next video. Onto the cortex and the brainstem, a lot of stuff is stored here, starting with the frontal lobes. Here many procedural memories are stored, processed and encoded. Memory for motor skills are stored here too, which makes sense given that the motor cortex is right here. The parietal lobe is where spatial memory seems to be stored. In the temporal lobes, memory for sound, names of colors. And the occipital lobes, of course, are memories for pictures and visual information. All these things make a lot of sense given the roles that these lobes play in the brain anyway. And the last thing we're looking at in this diagram, the cerebellum, a really crucial place where procedural memories like skills and things that you do are stored. We're going to take a few minutes to focus in on this part of the brain a little bit more now. So what does the cerebellum do when it comes to memory? Like I mentioned before, it encodes, processes and stores procedural memories, particularly motor skills, along of course with the motor cortex of the frontal lobe. So things like remembering how to tie your shoelace or remembering how to drive a car. These are all procedural memories. They are part of implicit memory. The cerebellum also seems to play an important role in classical conditioning. So that's learning by association, like a learned reflex response. This was figured out not just by research done on humans, but on cute little bunny oneies. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Uh, by Green and Woodruff Pack in 2000, where they found that rabbits with damaged cerebella were not able to be classically conditioned, amongst other things. So the main takeaway here is that the cerebellum is really important when it comes to remembering procedural things. Now, you might remember me mentioning before that the hippocampus was like a bit of the opposite. It was really important in remembering declarative stuff, explicit knowledge. And so a really interesting type of amnesia occurs when people sustain damage to the hippocampus, but not the cerebellum. This type of amnesia is called enterograde, in which they're unable to remember anything from the injury onwards, but are still able to learn new skills. Think about that for a second. Does this make sense? Well, yes, because if the cerebellum was unharmed, then procedural memory formation and recall is still totally fine. This person can still store the memory of new skills that they've learned. However, a damaged hippocampus means no new declarative memories like events and facts can be stored any longer. And that explains interrogate amnesia, which I think a few movies have been made on. Anyway, see you in the next video.